Uh, so uh, welcome on board, everyone. Thank you for joining uh, our Grono's second uh, virtual origin trip uh, in 2021. Uh, today we're visiting our friend Mebrato in Ethiopia. Mebrato is in uh, Addis at the moment. And the reason why we couldn't go to a washing station is because the internet doesn't work very well or doesn't work at all at the washing station. So Mebrato, you can say maybe hello to everyone as well. Okay. Thank you, Luisa. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the origin trip to Ethiopia. I am here in Addis, in my office currently. As Luisa says, you know, the internet connection, connection is very poor in the washing station area. So it's better to, to talk to you here in Addis for more better infrastructure. And I'm just highlighting on the map here, uh, the areas in which yeah. uh, Boledo, which is Mebratu's company operates. So they operate uh, washing stations in Gede, which is the uh, the Ege Chafi coffee growing region, and also in Goji, and they operate with vertical integration with many washing stations. They have uh, deals in place with the washing station owners to uh, supply coffee, they pre-finance some coffees, and they're also very um, hands-on involved in the actual quality, uh, quality control and uh, processing of the co of those coffees, and that's why they can that's how they can make some uh, very interesting micro lots as well. Uh, before I give Mebrato the words, I just want to do a quick first stop at Algrano. This is kind of like the advert moment before the security announcements on the flight. I am sorry, but I have to do it. <laughs> and just to say that, explain to those who don't know Algrano very well. So Algrano is, a, is an online platform that was created to facilitate commercial relationships between coffee producers and coffee roasters in Europe. The idea is that we as a service provider can facilitate the logistics for importing uh, coffee to ro coffee roasters that can't import themselves. So we partner with producers in uh, origin countries like uh, Mebrato in Ethiopia to um, offer coffees directly to roasters. And then at the end, we coordinate all the logistics with them on the exporting side, and we will import uh, and organize financing, warehousing, etc., for roasters. Uh, Al Grano, all the pricing uh, is transparent, and you can see the FOB price, you can see farm gate price, you can see all the uh, the importing costs and Al Grano fee in a very uh, transparent way. And on average, eighty percent of the uh, the other value that circulates on the platform goes back to the uh, to the producers, which is really cool. Uh, I just want to do a quick shout out to uh, a new feature that we released as well uh, recently, recently, which is our sourcing planner. So the idea is that because we realize that to, when you buy coffee di directly from the origin, you have to plan yourself ahead very well because um, it takes uh, it takes a while between booking the coffee, the coffee being prepared to export, the coffee being afloat and then landing. So we have this sourcing planner uh, on the, uh, dash, the main dashboard overview. So you can plan your entire year in sourcing if you want. So you have an idea of when you have samples, when the coffee will be shipped, etc. And that's something that we're aiming to help you guys organize more. And if you go to the platform as well, you can already find uh, coffees from Mebrato. They are, they're all listed uh, under his profile on the platform. And if you click on coffees, you can find them as well. Uh, samples are available. And uh, you can see the different profiles, different washing stations that, that, he's, that he has on offer. And you can uh, see what profile is more interesting for you. There's some really nice floral coffees. Uh, and just another thing that I'd like to remind you is that we have uh, launched this week the uh, Ethiopian Harvest Report for this year. So talking a little bit about what's going on with the country uh, in general, what affected the harvest, how it's going this year, uh, talking a little bit about COVID, the impact of COVID and the uh, Tigray conflict in the north as well. That's, uh, Mebrato was a big contributor to this harvest report, I'd say our main contributor, and you can find this at Ethiopia Origin Guide page as well. Uh, 
just uh, one last thing. So we have a QA and a at the end. We also have prepared a very special thing, which is a, a coffee ceremony, like a traditional Ethiopian coffee ceremony. ceremony. So uh, after the, uh, the ceremony, we'll have a Q&A. You can send your questions on the chat to, uh, to Mebrato during the presentation. And uh, Maria here from the marketing team will help us organize them and read it to them afterwards. And if you want to join the conversation as a panelist as well, uh, you can raise your hand and Maria can, can promote you. So that's just more so we can have a more, uh, a more real experience of an origin trip. You can talk to me about it more directly rather than just having to write on the chat. So feel free to raise your hand and join the conversation. All right, so next is Addis. Uh, Mebrato, I'll, I'll leave it to you. Uh, I have here the little map of your, of your uh, office here at that tower, very close to the office, to the airport. But I think the times here, is the traffic, is the, the times real considering how bad the traffic is, Mebrato? Uh, here is the, the, hello, hello everybody. <laughs> You hear yeah, me? we can Hello? hear you, but we can't see you. Uh, you, you, saw, you saw me, right? Not now. Now I just see your, your, your photo. Mm, sure. Um, come back. Okay. Uh, no, can't see you yet. Okay, so, Mebrato, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just hearing you, but I can find your, your voice, I think. Okay, uh, I can see uh, you. I'm, I'm here now. You, you uh, saw me now? Yes, I can. Good, good. Thank you. Can Thank you guide, everybody. Thank you. Can you guide people through Addis and tell them what's like, what they find when they arrive in Ethiopia? Yes, uh, in Addis, everything is good now. It's very safe. It's, the weather is very nice. It's almost about uh, between 21 to 22 degrees Celsius. So it's comparing to Europe, it's very bright now in Addis. So, I can see it's uh, sunny before yeah, you show the way. Sunny. Yeah, it's very, yes, it's very sunny. I can try to show you maybe out of the window. Uh, I'm seeing, I'm just this is very so bright. I can just see you for now. Couldn't see yeah. outside. Yeah, but but here you are right. The, my office is very, it's very near from the airport, maybe five minute driving. And uh, yeah, of course, it's very, the traffic is very crowded around here because it's almost the downtown of the city, you know. And this is one thing that I wanted to highlight as well is that when I visited Ethiopia, I stayed in a hotel that's very close to your office. But this is your new office, right? So we, you were not there when I, when I visited, but you took us to uh, this yes. Habisha, to the Habisha restaurant. Which is an amazing Ethiopian. Yeah. Habisha. And when you're there, I yeah, it's it's almost two minute walk. Yeah, and you, we, if you go to Ethiopia, you have to try it. Uh, I'm just gonna show the little, just share a little video of what you find the kind of experience you have in Habisha, just because. Yeah. So it's a, it's like this big, uh, this very wide room, and there's always a lot of. Uh, dancing, traditional dancing and tra traditional singing going on. There's a lot of tourists, uh, but still it's a very nice thing to... Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, this, this is uh, the 2000 Habisha traditional restaurant. It's almost, you can show here in the dinner, in the evening, so you can see a lot of uh, ethnic dancing, Egyptian dancing. So you can show here a little bit here. Yeah, no, I just remember this lady like shaking her head a lot. It was, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's called the Bali, the Bali area dancing. All right. Uh, do you want to show the office a little bit around Mebrato? I don't know if you have um, people yeah, that you want to introduce. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can show you some office for for right now. Is, is it available for you? Is it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Here. here is my office actually. Louise, can you stop sharing your screen? Sure. Okay, hey guys. Hello. So here is the office. If the person is looking, is it okay for you? Here is around the office. I'm just doing a business around here. So here is uh, some uh, here is some uh, screen here. I think here is my. Uh, you know that this time for Ethiopia, it's already work time is ended. So my time is already ah, going up. Is that they're why they're alone? Yeah. Yeah, they are going. You know, maybe before thirty minutes, they are already leaving. Okay. <laughs> so my brat, yeah. whilst while, while you're there, can you explain to people why there is a Christmas tree in the office? Ah, <laughs> look, you know that the calendar of Ethiopia is very different, quite different from the Gregorian uh, calendar, you know? So still we are in the vibe of the Christmas. So Christmas so was, still, for, for us was, I think, yeah. the 11th of January or something like yeah, that. Yeah, still it is here every year it's because here we are just celebrating the Christmas in office after the holiday in uh, our home, actually, with my staff. So still we are, we, are, we are on that, so maybe after a week it will be uh, ended the holiday, I think. <laughs> and you have, you have 13 months as well, right? Yeah, it has 30 months. Uh, in Ethiopia, it has 30 months. The 13 months is, you know, only five days, but within uh, five years, it will be six days. It's in the beginning of September. From September five to to eleven, you know, or ten sometimes. So, actually, this month we have a special month for us. It's a good time to to go to just share to communicate with our farmers in the farm, in the washing station area, you know. Mm -hmm. So we are doing with the with the farmers. So we call it farmers month, you know, as mm -hmm. additional to the the thirty months. And there is no one at the uh, at your lab at the moment, the cupping lab. Yeah, I, I'm going to be to the lab right now. It is near to my office, actually. So here is the lab. And you have over there your... So here, here, here is the cup. You have the cup yeah. of excellence certificate. Yeah, maybe a little bit. A, a little bit coffee is here now, maybe ready to to send to the HL, you know, some mm -hmm. samples are already packed here, mm -hmm. this way, so around here, if you see it has some cattle here, mm -hmm. you know, for, for, for the, yeah, for the cupping materials, equipments, here it has. So I think you can get some picture here. The last year that we win uh, the cup of excellence, yeah. as you know, from the anaerobic coffee. Was that yeah, uh, is the total, uh, Mibrat, was that coffee uh, similar to one of the coffees that are on the platform right now? Was it like the Tej? Absolutely. The Tej Absolutely. Tej. That's that's right. That's right. We cup right now. We score it here about eighty nine. It's very nice coffee. Very clean, complex cupping profiles. We mm -hmm. we we will we just expecting this year as well. It has a competition. We will do again and expecting we will get some much rewards this year as well. Wow. And it has in Algranus platform as well. I think now now we should be seeing, we can, can we see your face again, my brato? Because I guess- Okay, I'll see you. I'll show you. This is actually, you see this? This is the yeah. cup of excellence that we win, the oh. coffee in the drying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the picture, right? Mm -hmm. This year we do. And I think I'll show you here again if you want. Mm -hmm. This is it. Maybe you can hear. <laughs> it says actually we are 27. Here is my partner receiving the reward because at that time I was not in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. So here is the, the other side part of my. Here is some samples here putting every coffee. It has a name here. 
So it has as well, it has a parchment coffee, washed coffee here. Here has some anaerobic coffee mm -hmm. and some of coffee here when I dry pictures here in the grading area of the lab. So if you see here, around here, it has a lot of samples here, around here, we are putting here. Actually, right now, a lot of coffee are not arriving in Addis warehouse. So what can we do it? We have two types of sampling. Uh, Before well, at the moment is the the harvest is pre is pretty much over already as well, isn't it? Already ended, yeah. Already ended. Now starting coffee is starting the stocking in Addis warehouse. Mm -hmm. uh, so now it should be easier to get samples for you as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So maybe the washed coffee almost eighty percent is just arriving in our Addis warehouse. The natural still we're expecting starting from next week it will be start to uh, arrive in Addis warehouse. So here is uh, some part of I am in the lab still. If you see here, it has some coffees. You see it's this awesome. coffee is coming from the farm. So mm -hmm. before the coffee is coming to Addis, we will check the coffee here. You know. Mm -hmm. So we are just putting with green pro because we don't like to affect on the, the I mean, some smelling or something because it's coming with car, something like that. So we put this way. This is natural free coffee. Maybe here it has a coffee. Mm -hmm. It's a bug. A lot of samples is putting here, you know. Is it the, the how you buy the smoke pipe? Me brazo, can you hear me? Maria, can you hear him? Hello? Okay, I can hear you now again. I hear you, I hear you. Me brazo, can, yeah, can you yeah. show people a little bit what it looks like outside the window? Just a little glimpse okay, of- Okay, I'll show them. Okay, I will try to show them. Uh, that's better through this. I think Sally is just running, going out now. Oh, so yeah. here in the city, if it's possible, I don't know. He's, it has a big hotel around my office. Mm -hmm. is it a good Maybe hotel? I can try to, if I get an option, I, I can try to show you my, maybe the other side. Let me show you. Give me a second, please. I'll show you the city. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, let's see if the uh, his mobile Wi-Fi thing holds or not. And now we're gonna stress test the <laughs> internet. But I guess it's part of the experience. Yeah, yeah. I was finding that. Sorry, sorry. I was finding the. Yeah, no, I think the uh, the Wi-Fi wasn't holding on very well. Ah, it's working. It's working right now. Uh, yeah, Addis is very tall. Very tall city. Okay. Nice. Thanks, Nevarato. I don't think we're going to see much of it. I think it's like a demo mode, you know, when you see it a bit blurred, uh, but then everyone will have an inspiration to come and see it in person. <laughs> yeah, you know what, I'm in the second floor actually, so to see the, the city, it's it's a little bit difficult. Yeah. It's better than if I go upstairs and uh, to see the whole city, because I'm in the heart of the city. Okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to uh, share a few photos if that's okay. Uh, so we can go through the photos because we can't be at the washing station. So we can look at some photos and maybe you can describe them. So okay. I think one thing of when you visit Ethiopia is that you, I think you, you usually you need to give yourself a couple of days in Addis when you arrive. And then when mm. you go up country, the thing that you need to do is that you go really early in the morning. Like you have to go before six. Otherwise yeah. the traffic is, it, is insane. Uh, it will take you a lot more than nine hours 
to get down south where where coffee is grown if you leave uh, yeah. if you leave late. So I think like one of our one of my colleagues even say if you don't wake up on time I will leave you behind because we have we have to go. <laughs> uh, but and I have a little bit of a, a little video as well of just what it looks like from the roads because I took little, lots of like little phone videos just to uh, just to keep on memory a bit like what the road is like. Um, yeah. Can you guys see all right? Yeah, I saw, I saw it. It's, those phones are very popular in the coffee area. <laughs> And you have always have to stop to drink coffee on the road as well. That was one thing that we you have to start your coffee. Yeah. The coffee yeah, is that's good as well. And it's yeah. coffee, and usually it's prepared the same way as Mebrato is gonna show us later. Yeah. Uh, so like always like this overflowing cup, uh, like little cup that shows kind of like the generosity and the hospitality of of mm -hmm. uh, of your host. Uh, Mebrato, can you talk a little bit about what the uh, what the farms are like in Ethiopia? What the plantations are like? Look here, I, I see a good picture in your in your side. It's in the coffee farm. The farmer is around there. I so saw the farmers. Yeah, that's true. This is actually our Ethiopian coffee here. The tree. Yeah, one thing that I like about this is that in other countries, the you have like the coffee trees are more like more like bushes and they're, yeah. they're shorter as well. In Ethiopia, they actually look like trees because the husband yeah. tree is a bit different. So they, they're yeah. taller, you have coffee all over you, like above you, around you, you have kind of like coffee everywhere. And you yeah. always have kids around you as well. Like wherever yeah. you go, you're followed by kids. They are family, one of the farmer's children, they are just moving. So. Yeah, the next generation actually, they are next generation, you know, so yeah, in, in around Yergacete and in the south, Kotali, coffee, we are, the, we are in the farm, it's like garden, you know, it's garden, so it's not a big tree, it's very just medium tree, like uh, maybe mid, one meter, uh, 170 meters around, I think, in yeah. average, so. And Mebrato, how is it that how do you work uh, with farmers and with washing stations? Because why do you work only with Irga, Chaffee, and Guji? Um, uh, the way I think we are just uh, actually in Ethiopia, it has a lot of area. Almost Ethiopia, about seventy-five percent of the area is just can produce coffee, you know. But maybe it was a limitation, and we have a good experience in the area of Yirgajasi and Guji, as well as it has a potential coffee that we can get from the from the farmers, you know. So because of that, next maybe after five years or something, we will just do in other place like in Sidamo, Limu, and in the southwest area. But right now we are focusing in the Yirgajasi because of, you know, that the profile is very, very nice. It's very good coffee. It has a good name, a good brand. It makes simple for us, for the international market, because a lot of, like Algrano knows about the area of coffee. And the other thing is, you know, my partner, Aviot, is born in Irgajete, you know? Ah, that, and that's crucial, isn't it? You need to have someone that's local, I guess. Yeah, it, yeah, it makes sense, you know? It's very simple to cooperate with the farmers, because he is growing up from the society, so it's it's better. It will be, it will be happen, or it will be have a, a good conversation with the farmers. Good concept, knowing the culture as well, you know. So that's better. We choose the Argentinian good. Where were you born, Mebrato? Uh, I was born in the north part of Tigray, actually. In Gondor, you know. Are you are you from Tigray? Yes, my people is, my, my family is from Tigray, but I born in the Amhara side, you know, in Gondor. So, of course, I'm just uh, coming from the North Tigray people, that the war is happening right now. 
Is it still happening though? Because the government says it's over, uh, that they won, that everything's fine, but I know you have family there, so it's a bit different. So what what what's going on at the moment? I will I will be happy if it will be stop the war right, right now because I'm the right person that one affected because of the war, the war, some of people are just in trouble, you know? But still it has a war, still it has a big problems uh, from the civilians, still people are, they have no water for 100, almost 95 days, no water, no electricity, no internet, no telecommunication service, you know? So you can imagine if, these are in Europe are basic needs. So you can imagine if this are not happening, even it's very difficult to judge what is happening right now because we are hearing only from the governmental mainstream media. You know? Yeah, and you have but said that some, you couldn't speak with your grandma for a few for a month or yeah, so. Yeah. And now but now you can yeah. speak with her again. Yeah, yes. In the capital, of course, in the capital city of the north part in Tigray. Still, it is working. The telecommunication is working. But not the on the country side, yeah. Yeah, the other side, you can imagine. So the one percent people, they are getting the internet, and the other 90 percent, they have no access, you know? So, yeah. but you know that, I am, look, I'm, I'm coming from the north part, but my family is just working in the coffee business. Actually, I'm second generation in the coffee business, you know? They was distributing all, when I was a kid, they were distributing a coffee to the local market. Because of that, I'm just joining the coffee business after I finish my, my college, my university care. And you worked for a you worked for a big company in Ethiopia before you started your own your own business, didn't you? Yeah, for the last uh, 12 years, I was just working with my family business for about Six year and the other six year in the, the coffee that exports called Tadesa Desta, you know, both the business are still actual available in the, they are just working in the, in the exporting, they are too big comparing to Baletu, because, they, but they are commercial, commercial uh, traders, you know. Mm -hmm. And you want so, to work more with more quality, like more quality focused coffees, I suppose. Yeah. Yes, that's why I'm choosing and just establishing a new company, Baladu, with my partner Abio to do. We have the coffee, we have the farmers who are lucky. It has an amazing coffee in the farm. So why we are not promoting this amazing coffee to the world, you know, to the market. So because of that, we create that company. Now we are doing very well. It's very good uh, growing up in Baladu side. And you told me once that the way that you work is, so before the harvest, you have this big meeting with the farmers, you uh, explain to them what you kind of expect in terms of the uh, cherry collection or how ripe they have to be, what the quality that you that you guys want to work with, um, how, you, how you pay a, a premium for that kind of coffee, for that kind of cherry and um, so you kind of like train them on how they should uh, they should do the collection and mm -hmm. so then you can receive better coffees when the when the season actually starts yeah actually we have uh, in about in your gajafi three washing station in guji one washing station you know in hambala guji in aricha your and onga your at the same time your gajafi get and always in the, before the harvesting is starting, we have a training session and we have a meeting session with the farmers, which is my favorite time to get a good coffee in the, in the, in the, in the harvesting, after the harvesting actually. So we, we, we call it that time, it's, it's like the 13 months, it has, in Ethiopia it has 13 months in uh, September, from September 5 to September 10, sometimes in five years, it's six days. So we call it in our company, farmers man, you know? So for the, for one week, we are just meeting with the farmers, 
what will be happening probably, how is harvesting, what you feel about the cherry with, with the summit from the farmers. And then we give how harvest is going on. And this is Halo Verity actually, it's a very nice area. So, you know, with the farmers, we are discussing a lot of things about the coffee. And the second thing is we always pay a second payment, premium payment, we call it. You know? In a year, we gather the cherries from the farmers and we sell to the market like al grano. And then finally, in the, in the farmer's month, in, all, in September, we will pay the second payment to the farmer, you know. No, and I'm showing here uh, Halo Beritsi, not just because uh, it's the washing station where all your micro lots are coming from. So at least yeah. the ones that, that you're offering on the platform. So you have the carbonic yes. maceration, you have the anaerobic fermentation, and you have uh, you have Tej as well. Uh, and then yeah. let, let's talk about that one soon. Uh, yeah. But it's yeah. also to show people that it's it's very it, everything's very close. So like all the washing stations are very close to each other in a way. So like you have Cocheri, which is a big name that people know, uh, and you have Chelelecto in the map as well. This is also a big name that yeah. people know, and it's like. So Halo Beriti is a less known name, but the quality of the coffee is so, it, it's crazy. And it's like, it's because it's all from the same region where soil yeah, is yeah. really good, uh, altitudes really is really high. Yeah, so you have, you get this incredible coffee. Yeah, this, you're right. This, this is your washing station. Yeah, this is my lovely washing station. <laughs> and, one thing that I wanted to show as well is that we were talking about uh, female uh, female coffees or like how do uh, in Ethiopia if if there is any kind of um, uh, empowerment of female producers or female workers, and you were talking about Salam that she is kind of like yeah. the uh, the boss in the uh, washing station managing the wash the quality control for you, and and. That's that's her. Talk, tell me a little bit more about her because I remember seeing her, but I didn't talk to her much. She looks badass. Yes, <laughs> yes. Salam is our, she's actually our manager in the washing station. She do a lot of jobs in the in the washing station. Uh, of course, we, we need more to, to do more with female, to empower the females, but of course, she had the skill to manage of the, the labor, the quality, everything that will be just distributing how to, even, you know, we are paying to the farmers. She has more, a good skill to communicate with the farmers. You know? Actually in the farm, she's almost, she's our, she's our hero, you know, always she's doing, at the right time, the making, Decision making is, her decision making is amazing. And she knows the coffee as well. Even she, she after the, the harvesting is ending, she's just uh, visiting the farmers. She's talking the farmers, not only about our business, even she's just talking with the farmers if some uh, personal farmers problems is just collecting information and we can discuss how to solve with the farmers, you know? So she's very, nice employee she's very nice staff from us so she, as well she's growing up in that area you know she's growing up she, she's growing she born around the year Gajafi. so she knows very well that area as well. uh Mebrato, did you say that she was kind of like in the area it's kind of like the only washing station the only female washing station manager is that right yeah you know that in year Gajafi, it has more than 100 something washing stations, you know. She is the only washing station manager in that area. The only female one. Yeah, but next time we will have in Fuji, she's trained with her, some, some employees just training with her. Maybe we will, we, we will empower the another female in another washing station as well. Ah, nice. Yeah. And Mebrato, can you uh, can you explain people as well a little bit how washing stations are organized in Ethiopia? Because I think Ethiopia is quite it is a different not a different country, it's a different planet for people. Yeah. When you first 
get there, it takes you a while to understand how things work. So before yeah. coffee could only uh, be sold via the auction at the Ethiopian Commodity Exchange. Now yeah. coffee can be sold directly. Uh, but then tell me, tell me a little bit more about how the washing stations are organized as well. Okay, look, in Ethiopia, yeah, you are right. It's very different from comparing to the, the, the other country that produce coffee, you know. Actually, the farm is very little because it's just subdivided with small farmers. In average, one farmer will be have about 2.5 hectares. So, at, so are, they, are they members of washing stations or they can sell coffee to every any washing station that they want? Yes. For example, in Halabariki that you are showing the washing station here, in the picture is Balandus washing station. Actually, we are doing this with, we get a land from the government because land is government, governmental, is owned by government. You know? So we buy the land, buy lease, and then we will build the washing station, the African beds, a lot of things we will just invest there. And we are collecting the coffee in the harvesting time from the farmers, you know? How do you deal with the competition? Because there's a lot of competition for coffee, isn't there? And that's driving the price for cherry up. Yeah, that, that's the main thing. It's a great question you asked, Louisa. Always, yes, it will have a competition. Actually, as a company, Balladu, and we are young too, we need to grow up with the farmers. We need always to pay a good price, a premium price for the farmers. Always for the all washing station, it has a same price. But what we can we do is to get a premium and quality coffee. We will pay additional payment for the farmers. You know. And can you tell me a little bit about this photo as well? Because this we're going more towards processing and fermentation. Is it your partner that takes care of that? Yeah, we here we have some a little bit three types of. Uh, uh, fermentation we do. I think if you see the stilly is carbonic fermentation, and uh, the other the, the one that you can't see very well on the on the uh, left side of the photo, like the uh, the tank. Okay. Yeah, yeah, in the left side. Yeah, yeah. maybe I can uh, show you some. Maybe I can send you some uh, videos about that. Mm -hmm. And the other thing in front of us is the wine. Ah, this one in the the blue barrels. Yes. Okay. That's uh, so that's similar to the way that you make wine in Ethiopia. Yes, that's the same. This honey wine, our moms, all of Ethiopian moms are just doing the honey wine simply, including my wife. They are doing. Maybe I can show you later how well, they are doing the honey wine. The you have some in the office now that I have seen yeah. already. Yeah. You can you can show it to us now. I can show you. I've seen the bottle. Yeah. Uh, okay. So is it is it is it? Do you show? Do you see it? I see you. Uh, you seen me? Yes, I see you. And now I see the bottle. Yes. And now I yeah. see you again. So this is the touch, actually. I'm seeing you again. I'm not seeing so, you anymore. Oh, the internet's amazing. <laughs> Do you see it? No. <laughs> okay, let me let me show it. Ah, no, I see it now. I see it now. Can you stop sharing your screen? Because yeah, I think yeah. most of the people. Okay. This is this is the if you see it. Wine. Nice. Well, let me show you. Yeah. Here is the touch, actually. Yeah, it, it, it looks like, like mango juice. It's so strong. Yeah. It looks, the color is like mango juice because of the fermentation, actually, you know? So mm -hmm. let me show you. It's very, you know, you can uh, drink this. It takes 
about them. There will be too enough for drinking, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's very fermenty so, as well, like the flavor. It's long after really this. Yeah. Yes, the flavor is amazing and it's a little bit strong in mouth, you know? Mm -hmm. No, I remember if, it. If you feel some wine. Yeah, how, how, is remember the hangover, it, how is the hangover the next day? <laughs> it's, it's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it depends. It depends on the fermentation, you know? It depends on the fermentation. Somehow, our, for example, my wife do very smooth, simple, because of the, it takes on the fermentation, you know? If you take a little bit of time, it will be much more strong. Ah, okay. So it will be, it will be good, very hard in the hangover in the next time. But mm -hmm. sometimes she's making the fermentation, juicy, but strong in, in, the, in mouth. It will be very nice after you eat raw meat, especially, it's very nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh... No, has the, Maybe I'll to, I think uh, we can we do the uh, can we move on to the uh, the coffee ceremony now? I think yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you the coffee, the coffee ceremony. <laughs> yeah, I'll show you. But let me let me ask you about uh, about the winey the winey fermentation. If you if you come back about the the fermentation, I think you have already about uh, how we do in the in the tanker, you know. Ah, let me just show. Wait, let me just. Yeah. Show. Okay. So you do it. Uh, this one you do in the barrel. Yeah. And how do you do it? What's the process? Well, first of all, we are picking hundred percent red cherry. You know? Yeah. So you after we sell it. Do you rest it? Do you take it straight away to ferment? To ferment? How does it work? Yeah. So when we're picking, we are sure hundred percent must be red cherry, you know, because you know it must be a red cherry. Because at the same time, it must be too fermented, you know. So after that, we put the, the, to the we ferment in the tanker or in the barrel without oxygen, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you add something to the uh, from, to the tank with the coffee, or is it just coffee? Just no, coffee? just coffee, only coffee. Mm -hmm. And how long does it? Because, take? Yeah, because we 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 believe that we think that only just putting a coffee is, it has by itself it has an alcohol, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's enough to be make a ferment. And um, how long does it stay in the in the barrel? Uh, from it actually, it depends. It depends the, the oh, sorry. It depends on the on the weather from four days to five days. But we are just checking the the pH, you know, pH. Mm -hmm. And so if it's after kind of we, like, if it's kind of like, uh, does it foam or something? When do you know? When do you realize that you have to stop the process? Yeah, we, we would check through VH. So from four days to five days, we would take in the body without no oxygen. It will be so checked, the alcohol is uh, just fermented, and then we will out the African bed from 50 to 21 days. At the same time, we did in Ethiopia the honey wine make, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we are drying in Africa bed for the first time. This color. This is, the, yes. is it like this kind of like orangey color that the coffee is like after the process. Yes, this is the first day of the after from the time we are just out to the African bed. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so I remember when I was there, I took this photo. I don't know if it's exactly the same coffee, but I just remember yeah. how it was kind of white outside. There was this kind of like white coat. Almost as if the coffee looked a bit moldy, but it's not mold. I mean, it's just the uh, the result of a fermentation process. Is it the same coffee, or is it a different type of, of fermentation? Yeah, uh, it's. I think this coffee we see like it's the, the, the same. So this will be the color will be changed maybe in forty or fifteen days. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because in the, in the first day you can see the color is like orange. Mm -hmm. After three hours, it will be changed to a little bit black. Mm -hmm. So very fresh chocolate looks like that. 
Mm -hmm. And then it takes every time, every day, it will be changed the color. And finally, from 50 to 21, based on the weather, sometimes if the sun is very high, it will be take 50 days. But if the sun is a little bit, you know, less than 20 degrees, it will be take 21. Mm -hmm. okay. So finally, oh, we'll go to the coffee shop. Right <laughs> I'll stop sharing now because now, now we need to see. So here is here is the coffee ceremony way. I think I'll show you about you know about coffee in Ethiopia. It's it's not only for drink. What do you so mean? Not only for drinking. Uh, because people are just gathering with the hivers, so they are talking about about their social interaction, their problem, solving their problems. A lot of things they do in coffee, in, mm -hmm. even in winning, even some bad things will be just get together and discussing how they can solve, how they can even help their societies, even how they can just build some uh, social uh, centers like school, even to ask for government body, they are drinking the coffee, you know? But what happens if there is no coffee? Like, Sorry? Would, would, you can't have, you can't receive a guest without coffee then. That's yeah, like a bad, that's, 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 that's not that's, polite. That's a good friend. Yeah, that's a good friend. Always a guest is coming to home, you must do a coffee. Okay, and he's always and prepared coffee, this way. Yeah, and in the coffee ceremony, it has three types of drinking way. Mm -hmm. First, the first, first, first cup, second and third. We call it. It has a name actually. Okay. Or third, third is great one is the premium. The first coffee is very nice, and after that they put it in water. It's very simple. Simple in. Ah, in you uh, brew the coffee three times. Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And you know that even if in the in the rural area, in the farm area, in the morning. They are not grinding coffee with uh, electricity because it has no power in the in the in the uh, rural area. You know, mm -hmm. they are making by traditional. You know, mm -hmm. so that tra the, that traditional sound it has it has a sound that traditional uh, grinding. How do they grind? There, ah, uh, maybe or if I have a video, I'll try it. They are making, they are roasting the coffee and they are making it has some. Uh, Wood, made wood. Ah, it's like a just, big, like a pestle yes. and mortar kind of thing. Yes, they are making that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, even if in the rural area, in the morning, if the Nahaver is not putting the coffee grinding because it has a voice, it has a sound, they are going to ask him, are you okay? Is it okay in the house? You know, because it's a checking, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because anybody are just drinking a coffee in the morning. Mm -hmm. And who's, now, helping, which, who's helping you today to make the ceremony? I, I will show you. I have my friend actually here. She's, she's a copper. Her name is Kal. Mm -hmm. And she, she just, just making a cupping and preparing a sample here in uh, my office. <laughs> you, maybe you can say hello. hello. She looks beautiful. She hello, just drinks in. <laughs> maybe I can... Uh, I can show you her. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> Hello, nice to meet you. So what's, the, uh, what's the traditional clothing? What's the clothing about? This is Ethiopian cultural clothes. Mm -hmm. Let me show you. <laughs> and is it? Uh, is it always white, or does it work? Can it change? Can it be different colors? Is it? Is, no, does it have a specific always. pattern? Most of the time, it's white. Mm -hmm. We we wear it on holiday or uh, events like uh, festives. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, like this this kind of meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you doing there? Then can you can you show us the uh, the whole process of the ceremony? Okay. 
Uh, okay, I'll show you and the thermal. Maybe it's better to show the next one. Uh, are you here? Uh, you disappeared, my brato. Let me show. Sorry. And don't forget, guys, if you have questions, just write them down on the uh, on the chat and you can read them to uh, Mebrato after the ceremony. I don't think we're going to have a lot of time, but we can definitely pin some stuff in. I still can't see you, Mebrato. Uh, you saw me? I'm, I'm, I, can, I can read you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I can see, you you see the photo now. I think you turned your video off. Yeah. It's a great moment to think about a question to ask. <laughs> no, and the, and the thing is that in Ethiopia, whenever you see the, co the coffee being prepared in the traditional way, it's always a lady. And they always say it's always the coffee ladies, the coffee lady. Uh, and then we asked my brother the other day, why is it always a lady? And it's like, the ladies are beautiful. <laughs> and it didn't go into much more detail after that. Uh, Look, you know, females in Ethiopia is the most important thing in the society. Even if, even if in home, I don't know, they have a lot of burden actually. Uh, so in the culture, I think that's my view. The, the lady has better conversation with the guests that are coming. And I think even the people are just looking with lady. You can imagine if I just, for example, in home, if I do the coffee ceremony as a man, maybe the guests will be not happy. I think more better than happy with the with the lady, with the women. They are better at talking, and then they because they are talking, they prepare the coffee as well. So the two things. Yes, I think so. So look, she's uh, here traditionally just roasting, you know. Now it's just starting first crack. It seems very, uh, very green still. Yes, still it's green. Still it's green. This is actually the washed coffee, Hello Ah, nice. Is it the yeah, same? Very nice Is it the same one so, that you sent us? The... Yeah, here it has. Here it has the bottle. If mm -hmm. you see. Yeah. So she's roasting. Here it has a bottle. Just putting the powder of the coffee and mixing the water. Mm -hmm. It will be then will be a coffee. Here is the cup. Uh huh. And here is uh, some popcorn. So why do you have popcorn there? Uh, in Ethiopia, they are making not only they are not drinking only coffee. You know, they are just making some bread or some popcorn. That's the tradition of the coffee. Okay. Is it like injera or popcorn, or is it a different type of bread? Oh, it's very different. It's very different because this is very simple to, you know, to make it like you can imagine eating burger in the in the cinema and the, you can eating the popcorn is very different, you know. Mm -hmm. So for the people, they are doing like this. Maybe some days they are making traditional bread with the mm -hmm. coffee. Mm -hmm. I was trying. I was trying today in my home, but you know, this is Ethiopia. No power in home in the morning, so I can come to my to my office early. And how long does it take to uh, roast the coffee like that? For this? Yeah, in the pan. Maximum is four minutes. Four minutes. Four minutes, because you know it's very limited. Limited uh, power, it has, it's easy. It's now, really you see the color is changing now. Ah, uh, yeah, definitely. definitely. And you can imagine, you see, you see this, the grass? Mm -hmm. The grass is a tradition, it's it's the tradition. When you drink the coffee, people are just putting here in, uh, in, the, in the ground. Mm -hmm. And they, they think that it's very, you know, it's green. Mm -hmm. So they are thinking that it's hot, you know? It's hot. 
the hope. Mm-hmm. So, so, so future is bright. They think that. So, when the guest is coming, looking at the, like a grass green, they will be make sense them. Especially the old, the old uh, people are very happy when see them when they saw it. <laughs> and when? So, how do you know that the coffee is ready and that you can stop roasting it in the? Uh... In the pan. Oh, here? You mean here? Mm -hmm. uh, after grinding, actually. But to show you, we have already, before we start this virtual meeting, we we're just putting a grinding. Okay, don't worry. Don't take a lot of time. Now we, <laughs> you see it's changing. Yeah? Uh -huh. If it is changing, here it has another material here. It is in. Uh, what what's that? I can't understand what it is. <laughs> this is uh, maybe she knows more color. Ah, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, so she they, they make some uh, a good flavor. They they are putting some flavors mm -hmm. from different trees. They are putting there, so it has some smoky and the flavor is very nice. Mm -hmm. And so you can brew coffee three times. Is it? Do you give the like the first brew to more important guests, and then the second Let, one to less important guests? How does it work? For all, you know, always. That's the powder, you know. The first is the the coffee, like Carl was putting first water and the powder in the in the bottle. Mm -hmm. And she knows for how much people is enough the powder, you know. Mm -hmm. And then first time for all, she gives all cups to all the guests. Mm -hmm. And the second time, still they are discussing. Think that the guests are just communicating. They are solving a lot of things. Mebrato, are we hearing the coffee crack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> is it disturbing you guys? No, no, no. It's just, it's interesting. Okay. Even you can see the smiling is out of now. Mm -hmm. Now it's, it's going out to the final cracking, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'll show you after this, the, the roasting is enough. If every guest, the lady is going to, to just smiling with them. Mm -hmm. So now it's already enough, you know. Let me show you and how, how we do it in the so it's like here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the tradition. They must be. So which means you can you can imagine in the lab, you are just feeling the roaster is feeling like the, the, the smiling, how the flavor is. Mm -hmm. Even if I know that. Based on the experience, a lot of times every day I'm drinking in my home with my wife. Even it has a single bud being in the in the roasted mushroom, I know it mm -hmm. <laughs> because I smile. But usually there isn't. Sorry. If you have coffee on the road in Ethiopia, is good coffee. Yeah, we have a good coffee, but you know, it has a little bit in the preparation. You know, it has. I you know that coffee makes. A lot of a lot of things to do better, you know, from mm -hmm. the preparation, the packaging, a lot of things will be happen. How the good coffee is to make bad, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe to just one thing. Uh, I think <laughs> we, as the uh, the ceremony is a, is a bit like it, it, it takes some time. Uh, we mm -hmm. just wanted to say to people that we can start the Q and A whilst the coffee is being prepared. So you can like ask uh -huh. questions uh, whilst the coffee is not ready yet. And yeah. it'll be a little bit over time. So I think for people, if you can stay a bit longer, just stay until you can see the, the rest of the ceremony because it's really nice. And, yes. Thank you. and then you can see the uh, the rest of the, uh, you can see the recording afterwards if you can't see the end of it. Okay. So okay. Rob is saying, unfortunately, we can't smell it. What does it smell like, Mebrato? I mean... You know, this in an open uh, roasting, traditional roasting uh, material. So we are just after the, we roast the coffee, it, it has some smiling. 
even in the roasting lab, if you see, after mm -hmm. the roasting is enough, if you output, the output is just, it has some smiling, you know? But what does it smell like? Does it smell, is it because coffee there, is it kind of like very, can you smell some floral? Can you smell some fruity? Or you just- A, a lot of, for, like for this coffee, it's in around your Gajafi because of that, it's very fresh actually. It's very new, fresh coffee. Mm -hmm. So it's look like floral, you know? So it's good. Maybe lastly, finally, after we just have it, I mean, drink it, we will know it very well. Mm -hmm. but, but you're right, it, it, it looks like a mix of flora, you know, but it's quietly different between the lab roasting and here traditional roasting, because mm -hmm. we Ethiopia needs very dark, mm -hmm. it's very dark roasting type, you know. And my brother, why is it that you drink coffee with salt in Ethiopia? I, I don't understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the rural area, they are just drinking salt with coffee. But why? Uh, you know that. Is because of, you know, that in the city, in the town, you are drinking coffee with uh, sugar. Mm -hmm. So they are not offering to buy a sugar sometimes. And sugar is... Sugar is sugar very is, in Ethiopia, isn't it? You was like, it's... Yeah, like sugar, sugar is the young, young, young ingredient that comes. So in the, in the, in the past year, the only the sweet thing was sweet thing was salt, you know, that, that's why still in some area are drinking. Uh, we can't see you, Mabrato? Uh, no, we can, okay. So, and one one person told me as well that it helps keep the sediments on the bottom of the cup, because there's always some sediments that comes from the, uh, from the jug that you use to prepare coffee. So that kind yeah. of like salt kind of helps, but it, it tastes a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes the coffee is strong, so they need some sweet things. That's why they are making salt. Mm -hmm. And are you not going to drink? For me, coffee? I, I, I never drink with salt. Actually, I drink with without any ingredient coffee. I drink coffee, but only coffee. Mm -hmm. But are you not going to drink the coffee? The coffee your friend prepare now. In home? No, now at the office. Yeah, we prepare without coffee. We drink without coffee, without uh, sugar. Without salt, okay, and without sugar. Yeah. Okay. Mebrato, uh, just we have uh, we have some questions uh, here. So one question that we received is: How do you decide uh, which processing you start with for coffee? So I suggest the. Uh, the capacity of a washing station is not big enough to process all the lots at the same time. So mm -hmm. that wouldn't be the case, but because you're receiving coffee in different times as well. But so how do you decide how you're going to process a coffee? If it's going to be washed, if it's going to be a natural, if it's going to be uh, like a special fermentation? Uh, similarly, at one time we can do like that, both sides. Sorry, I didn't understand. We do we do cementously we, we do washing station in some bed some bed will be for drying and the some very few in the fermentation we are not too big you know very maybe half container maybe hundred bag mm -hmm. per year you know because but, it takes it takes a lot of things for that. But so do you decide based on demand then? So like if people are asking you for wash, do you process washed coffees? Or if people ask you for naturals, you process more natural. How, how does it work in that sense? Uh, in Ethiopia, actually, we're doing in the harvesting, 30% is washed, 70% is natural in okay. total. Okay. So yeah, it's, in total. it's the other way around in a lot of, a lot of places, isn't it? Because mostly there's mostly washed coffee still. Yes. But you focus on naturals. Yeah, we focus on natural. Actually, we have uh, we have uh, always every year we have a plan how many containers we can sell, how many containers we can prepare, natural coffee, washed coffee, and fermentation coffee, you know? Mm-hmm. That's and, out on uh, yeah, out on the clients as well. Sorry, I didn't hear. Uh, that's out on our study and our just how many companies are just asking natural and how many are washed. Oh. For example, here, this year we are just preparing in around 
forty percent is washed coffee, you know. Mm-hmm. So this year and it's more washed. More washed. Yeah, washed. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, and the other, the rest is the fermentation is maybe one percent, even less than one percent, you know, and the sixty percent, fifty nine percent, we are doing natural. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's there is another roast asking about the quality of coffee you drink in Ethiopia. So like when you make your you drink your coffee at home, you make your ceremonies, is it the same coffee that you export? Is it the same grade? Really sorry. You guys are drinking a premium coffee. <laughs> so what's the grades that you keep in the domestic market? Yeah, in domestic market, it has uh, the way uh, two ways. Actually, 30 million people is just working in the coffee industry. Mm -hmm. including the farmer. So Mm -hmm. they can drink a good coffee from their farm or from their shop, the nice coffee they can drink for this. The rest, 70%, they are drinking really, it's it's, it's very, it's not good coffee they drink actually. Is it like undergrade? Yes, Mm -hmm. they are drinking, you know that, in the government rule, it has, after we export, you know, the rigid, it has a coffee, rigid. Mm-hmm. Ah, so that's so the they are, it's, it's for sale, yeah. And people pay well for that in Ethiopia, don't they? Yeah. Even they pay more than the export, you know that? <laughs> because of the, that, the government needs the hard currency very well, because coffee is the main thing that we get the hard currency, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because of that, it's, it's, not, it's not possible to sell export standard very premium coffee to the local market mm-hmm. but people but people they buy through some you know it's, it's uh, sorry to use this word they are just using through contraband you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So sometimes domestic- they are buying especially when the international market price is very low farmers are not going to sell to EJX. they are going to sell to the local market through contraband mm-hmm. they so they get a market of coffee as well, yeah. <laughs> and uh, there's someone else asking about uh, when you cup coffees in the lab, do you cup it straight away after roasting or do you let it rest? When you, uh, roast, sorry. Coffee, when you roast coffee for cupping in the lab, uh, uh, do you, when you cup them straight away or do you let them rest for like eight hours or a day and then you cup them? Oh, actually, we always stay. If you have a, a cupping session, always today is at this time we roast in the evening mm-hmm. or afternoon, and it will be rest the whole night. In the morning we will come. It must mm-hmm. be rest, otherwise it will be looks like smoky, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, so no, that makes sense. Think... To know the flavor very well. Yeah, that's how that's how we do it as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So one last question before we before we finish, and that's mm-hmm. that's more like a general question. So. Okay. What's two questions actually? So one, what's okay. the what's the best time to visit Ethiopia if you're traveling for coffee? And the second one is what what you can't miss in your trip. So one thing that you have to do or somewhere that you have to go to. Okay, uh, actually, coffee by itself is a good mutual interest to visit in Ethiopia. You know that for both because you guys you're coming to Ethiopia to buy a coffee to see. The coffee tourism as well, because the trees, the peoples, even how we eat. Ethiopia is quite different from the other world. We, are, we, have, we have a different calendar, as I told you earlier. It's 2013 example, our, in Ethiopia yet. That's yeah, why you don't yeah. have COVID. Yeah, because based on the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, we are just counting the year. It's, it's now we are in 2013. And today is, today is, it, it's February 3, right? Uh, February 4. 4, yeah. So we are late about eight days. Today uh-huh. we are 27 January, you know? <laughs> it must be very confusing. Yeah, so everything is very different. Uh, even, you know, Ethiopia is three, more than three year thousand country. It has a lot of castles in the country, a lot of dynasties that passed their, their, their rules and regulations happening. A lot of, you know, more than 86 ethnic 
I mean, nation in nation, nations, nationalized people, a lot of diversity language it has. Even the color is very dynamic, it's very diversified, you know. It's like me, the, the, the black, all are black, but very different, quite different people, very diversified. So you can come, even Addis Ababa, the capital cities, not only capital city of Africa, uh, Ethiopia, it's also Africa. It's mm -hmm. home, capital city of Africa. So it has a lot of things you can learn if you come to Ethiopia. I hope if the pandemic will be end, we will see you next year, harvesting time, we will go together. Is it better to travel in December or January? Yeah, December, January is better. Now, November, half November, full December and January is better to get all things, you know? So you can see more coffee, you can see more coffee being processed and everything. Maybe a bit yeah. more up. Yes, that, that's, that's a good time, especially November. I mean, full December is very nice. You can get the peak season of the harvesting time. A lot of coffee is just collecting in the farm, both the natural, the wash, the fermentation, even the, 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 the labor, everything you can see. I think you have experience, good experience last year. Mm -hmm. It was coming in January, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, so, when we went. Yeah. Okay, Nebrato, thank you very much. I just want yeah. to show people one last thing. Yeah. Uh, ah, we had the video. Up. We'll have to share the video with people later. Yeah. But if people want to talk to Mebrato, you can write to him directly on his profile on the platform. So you just have to find Boledo on the growers map and you can click on message grower. You send messages to Mebrato and he, he can reply directly to you. So keep up the conversation. Any questions that you didn't get the chance to ask or any questions that you think about later, uh, get in touch with him, send him feedback of the, uh, of the samples that you try as well. That's, that's very important to you. Uh, Tell him what's working and what's not working with the coffees that he's producing as well. So that's really, that's key for the process. And that's it. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, we have a number of other virtual trips coming up in the next month. We should have around one trip a month. And the next one is on the 4th of March. And we'll have, we'll be going to Honduras. So if you want to join us for then, just subscribe on our virtual origin trips page as well. Nebrato, thank you very much. And uh, well, enjoy your coffee. Thank you very much. One thing I will show you the, the final ceremony. She is drinking, I mean, she is just feeling to the cup. Even the way she can put, you can see everything, it has a rule and regulations on the, the ceremony, no? Yeah. You can imagine how good coffee it is. I know how, how good it is, that coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. You see, she, she's just giving like this way. Oh, and she can, she's putting here. So it has here. That's it. So we drink it like this way. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's very nice, probably, honestly. What does it taste like, Mebrato? Yeah, yeah. But please, next year we will do side. Maybe if you come with your with uh, our clients and you, your guys, your staff, we will do more better the same way in physical. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Great. Thank you very much for everything. Happy to speaking you. Have a nice evening. Have a nice evening yourself, Mebrato. Speak soon. Thank you. See you. Bye. 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 bye.